Hi, art teachers. I have another elementary lesson for you. This one I call People and Dogs because actually there's a portrait lesson and a dog lesson with very similar procedures. On the portrait version, lots of students like to start with um, really bright colors. This is a student sample. And you can see the black lines, which are gonna be consistent through these and all the bright colors on the faces. And then here's another one, starting with the black lines. And that one has more realistic skin tones. A lot of the kids like to do abstract colors on these because we are starting, we are learning with these about Picasso and Matisse. And then there's another one back over my shoulder here. That's a good one. And then this one, uh, there's Einstein. And this student spent a lot of time on his black lines and didn't put much paint on the face, which was fine. And here's another. Black lines, bright colors, different values and the same black lines. We have noticed that Picasso and Matisse both used a lot of black lines and it's something really easy to follow. I usually do this lesson with fifth and sixth graders and it takes about five times. And you can see Picasso's um, different, sh different colors on the skin and we play with that a little bit and it's all black lined. And then here's another Picasso and a Matisse with black lines. And this is actually a Modigliani. And, but Modigliani uses these black lines too to start his artwork. So it's a good one to look at as well. And then this one is a Picasso that's very um, abstract. So these can be, uh, if you have art prints, hang them up, otherwise pull them up on your smart board, make a Google presentation so you can go through them if you want to. And it gives the kids lots of inspiration on how they want to paint their art. All right, so the, the samples up front started all like this. We don't use pencil on these. We use black paint. So small brush, bottle tempera, and they're starting at the top. They're, they're trying to forget that it's actually a person. And they're just starting at the top of a picture that they're looking at. And I usually print off different portraits, mostly Picasso and Matisse. These two are Picassos. Uh, this Einstein, I think, is neither. And this one was a Matisse that we looked at on that one. But we're looking here at uh, the... Um, the Picasso, and we're just moving down the page like you would if you were drawing something that you're just following the lines, following the shapes, putting together. It reminds me of the upside Picasso that we've done before, the upside down, until you get to the point where you have the whole picture finished. This is a small one, but we do usually do them on a 12 by 18. So after you've got your person ready to go, the next day after these lines have dried and you've got your portrait, the, um, the head of the, and sometimes on down to the shoulders a bit, the next day we do uh, skin colors. And on the skin colors, since they are um, fifth and sixth graders, I'll usually lay some skin colors out on plates, a variety of skin colors and then usually lime green, yellow, uh, blue. Those are colors that you'll see on the faces of a lot of Picasso's and Matisse paintings. So that's a good way to start. And then you're coming in, let's look at this first one again. You're just coming in and finishing the rest of it on the later days. So once you've got the skin done, I say don't paint anything else on the skin, because it's, it's done, then they can do hair, eyes, clothes, however they want to. And we often leave this part white for a nice contrast. Okay, so you've got the days that, uh, that you've painted, uh, a variety of skin colors, and then all of the colors for the hair, the eyes, the clothes, 
Picasso and Matisse are fun to talk about as your anticipatory sets because they were the two giants in art uh, in the 20th century. Picasso, Spanish, child prodigy, uh, went to Paris when he was uh, 19. Matisse, French, his dad wanted him to be a lawyer and he got an appendicitis. So he had to spend a, a couple months in bed. And so his mom was taking care of him and she bought him a box of paints to pass the time. And he was taken with color. We call Matisse now the king of color. But Picasso and Matisse were always rivals and they made each other better and they challenged each other. And they would neither one be who they were if they weren't painting these. Picasso was especially interested in the forms and the shapes and, and Matisse color. Of course, they were both good at, all, at both of those. So that gives you that lesson. And then we sometimes take this same lesson, again, no pencil, but just paint, and we make a lesson of dogs. So we're taking, uh, again, a small paintbrush and black tempera bottle, and we're going. And then as you're doing any of these, remind the kids to do uh, come and go lines. You wanna skip here and there. Thick and thin, come and go. The worst thing they can do, you know, is to go over and make it all dark again, because all of this this come and go look looks more realistic. So we usually do our dogs, same way, looking at a picture and then uh, drawing with black paint. The thing that we do different, they have lots of dogs to look at so they can pick a dog to go from top to bottom with. But the thing we do differently with these dogs is we usually use um, uh, temper cakes and temper cakes have more of a dull look we call these biggie cakes because they're big and um, dogs kind of look look interesting with um, with that duller look here's a finished dog picture of a fifth grader and you can see he's got come and go lines he's got his colors on here the uh, the light color paper works good so when they're adding color, lots of times I will give my students magazine pages too. So magazine pages make great palettes because they can be thrown away. And so they might take, you know, some of their biggie colors and put them on here and kind of swirl them together to get different values and then come in and start making values on their dog's face so that they can get their dog to look real. And so they're looking at color pictures when they do this part, different color pictures for dogs. Uh, the dog version, a little bit softer look. The Matisse Picasso version, really, really bright. I've got green paint on my thumb. And good anticipatory sets for the dogs are um, dog facts and dog, silly dog jokes. Kids love those you can bring in all the elements and principles and talk about those quite a bit too. Um, on the Matisse and Picasso, pull up facts about them every day as you're beginning. And uh, your kids are gonna get uh, better and better when you remind them that the elements and principles are something to be thought about and to make their art better. And I hope you will enjoy making some dog pictures or some Matisse and Picasso portraits. Thank you.